Welcome back to my channel, AJ's Movie Place. Um, it's Saturday, and Saturday can only mean one thing. Time to look at part of my collection. Now, yeah, so every Saturday I do post a video whereby I look at part of my overall Blu-ray collection. I've done the Marvels, I've done the DCs, I've done comic book related stuff. Um, yeah, just go down, run through my list of things, you'll find, you'll find them. Um, so today, well, apparently there can be only one, but I haven't got one, I've got loads. I'm talking about Highlander. Yeah, I'm going to be looking at my Highlander collection of Blu-rays and DVDs. Yes, it's going in, back into DVDs. Um, but I thought I'd share that with you. Um, so, why not? Let's take a look. Now, before I begin, if you're a new viewer, then welcome to the channel. Um, I've got a wealth of content. Why don't you check it out? And also, consider subscribing. That'll help the channel. Yeah, help it grow, help me out, give me a thumbs up, all that. Um, leave me a comment. I will reply to all comments and hit the notification bell so you're aware of my upcoming content. Um, I do do a lot of weekly series. On a Monday, I do a ranking video. Yes. Um, on a Wednesday, I do AJ's Collectible Corner, where I take a little time out to look at a collectible from my collection, an opening of something new, that sort of thing. That time on a Wednesday, is, is for that. So you can check out historic ones of them. Um, I do do reviews, unboxings of DVDs, openings, take a look, all that sort of thing. You know, you know the sort of stuff we're doing. But here today, we're gonna to be talking about Highlander. So let's get straight into it. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna adjust the camera so that we're looking down and we can look at the titles that I've got. Um, Highlander and Highlander related. Yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so first up, this is um, a steelbook DVD release of Highlander from, I don't know where it's from. <laughs> but anyway, the film was released in 1986. Okay, so first up, this is a steelbook DVD release of Highlander, the first film. 1986, directed by Russell Mulcahy, um, starring Christopher Lambert and Sean Connery, um, and Clancy Brown as the Kurgan. Um, fantastic film, this is the Immortal Edition. Um, that's the front, that's the back, and that's the interior with two discs. Um, obviously, you know Highlander. It's a fantasy film um, about immortals that fight down the ages until there's only one left and that final one wins the prize. The only way these immortals can die is via decapitation. Um, so generally, for the most part, they fight with swords. Um, it's a fantastic film. It's set in different timelines, um, culminating in New York City is the main timeline, but it has flashbacks to these other eras when... Um, Connor, Connor McLeod, played by Christopher Lambert, was younger um, when he first became immortal and this sort of thing. Um, Sean Connery stars as his mentor, um, Ramirez. Um, Ramirez. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic film. Um, yeah, um, so that's the DVD version. Then I do have this one here, which is the Steelbook Blu-ray. Um, I got this some time ago, um, like so, that's the back, nice picture of Conor McLeod, and the interior. Again, a fantastic film, um, yeah, one that, it's kind of, you know, the fact that we did get sequels is a bit of a travesty in a sense because this was a sort of one done film and the narrative of the film ended it and, and it made it very difficult for sequels to be made, which we'll come into. Up next, we have Highlander 2. Again, this is the DVD version, um, special edition. Um, it is a two disc version, um, special edition, special edition. 
disc one, disc two. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not entirely sure now what edition this is. The odd thing about this film is that there have been um, there was a renegade version, there was a director's cut version. It's a film that is very mishandled in that they sort of rewrite the history of the immortals and instead of just being, you know, people on, on, on our planet, they turn them into these aliens from this planet called Zeist, um, which was a huge misstep. Um, these aliens, you know, they become aliens that are sent back to Earth to fight through the ages. This was then rectified in, in later cuts where they edited out any word, any talk of them being from another planet. Um, so it looked like they came from a long distant past, um, the, a, a now extinct past of humanity that, that they then jump forward in time and fight through the ages up until now. Um, yeah, it's a very ill-conceived film, but it's got a fascinating um, um, backstory to it in, in the making of it, which is far more fascinating than what the film is. Um, so that's Highlander 2 DVD. I also have um, the director's cut on Blu-ray, um, in which there were scenes that we we'll, did go back and film additional scenes and clean up special effects and all this sort of stuff for the film. So that is Highlander 2. Next up we have Highlander The Final Dimension, or as it was called in the UK, The Sorcerer. Um, this is the director's cut. Now this film does completely ignore the events of Highlander 2 and basically set it after Highlander 1. Um, it is a direct sequel to Highlander 1, but in this film their excuse for carrying it on is that there were these immortals in the past um, that were encased or imprisoned in 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 a tomb in a, in a in a cliff face, so to speak, um, but imprisoned by magic. So it kept them out of the competition of the quickening until they're freed from said prison. At which point, Connor McLeod realizes, I haven't really won this. The game is back on. I have to fight again. Um, Marianne Va Van Peeble stars as the the villain of the piece. Um, yeah. If you are interested in, in how I rank these films, um, I have done a ranking video. Um, so please consider checking that out. Um, I've put a cutaway of it on the screen. Um, now this here, interestingly, this is Highlander when the newspapers used to give away free DVDs. I don't know if you remember them days. Um, um, I think I may have had a hand in that being stopped because I did actually write to the powers that be and ask, how do you get away with giving away films with a newspaper? Um, because films are age restricted, hence this being a 15. Now, how can I send a, a, you know, a young person into a shop to buy a newspaper when you're giving away a, a, a film of a, a you know, particular age rating? Um, I mean, imagine it, uh, you know, at the age of 10 or something, I could walk into Woolworths, I could buy a copy of the News of the World and get this free with it. But yet I couldn't have walked up to the counter, the video counter in Woolworths and bought a copy of Highlander because it's rated 15. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> After I wrote my letter to the powers that be, with concerns to it, um, yeah, <laughs> that's what came to pass. Also, I don't know why in here is a Highlander 2 Renegade version book all about the making of it. Um, that should really be in my Highlander 2 thingy, and it will go back in there. Um, and that will go into Highlander 1. But there you go. So Highlander 3, The Sorcerer on DVD. Then I have Highlander 3, The Sorcerer on Blu-ray. I had to import this from... Um, Germany. Yeah, it's a German release with a re re um, reversible sleeve um, because it's unavailable in the UK on Blu-ray. 
Next up, we have this here. Now, this isn't Highlander, the Immortal Edition. <laughs> I kept the tin for some reason, but I've obviously got rid of the the, blue, the DVD that came with it. But inside, I do have the Region 1 release of Highlander Endgame, um, starring Christopher Lambert and Adrian Paul. Um, Ultimate two-disc collection. Exclusive new cut from the producers of the original Highlander. So, yeah, this was um, this was released in the year 2000. It's actually a sequel to the TV series of Highlander, which we'll come to, on to in a little while. Um, yeah, so, like I said, it's a two-disc edition. I've got no idea what that is. It's a thingy of some sort. Oh, wow, okay. So in here, I have a Highlander um, coin. So it's amazing what you find. I didn't even know I had this. Um, so it's like a Highlander holographic coin in there. I've got no idea where that came from. But it's inside my in-game box. Interesting. And in the front, we have the other disc. And oh, here's a photo of... Adrian Paul, the star, um, bearing his chest. <laughs> but it's actually signed by Adrian Paul, um, the Adrian Paul fan club. Yes, Bromley. Because Adrian Paul, the star of it, actually grew up not far from here. His mum lived, I don't know if she still does, but she lived in Bromley. And um, she was actually... The one who, who managed his fan club, so to speak. So, yeah, that's a signed picture of Adrian Paul, um, the Highlander. Then I do have the Highlander Endgame on Blu-ray. Like I said, I've done a ranking. Um, yeah. So that is that. Now, next up, in a tin box is this release of Highlander, The Source, Highlander 5, The Source. Um, it's got kind of a metallic-y sort of cover to it. Um, again, this follows on from Highlander Endgame in that it's a, it's a sequel film to the TV series, but it has no connection really to Eva. It's set in its own future. Um, it does have returning players from the TV series, um, but it's set in a future that you don't recognise from what you've seen before or anything like that. Um, it's a really odd film. Um, interestingly enough, I do have another copy of this because this film was actually released a year before anywhere else in the world. It was released in Russia, and I did source an original Russian copy of it. It was called Topeu, T-O-P-E-U. That was the Russian title for it. Um, and that came out a year over there on physical media before anywhere else. But it was then withdrawn and recut for a release elsewhere. Um, although the cuts didn't really amount to anything. They were minimal and you had to question why really. But yeah, it's a film I've only ever seen once. Um, because it's not a great film by any means. But as a completist, I do have it on um, Blu-ray as well. Um, yeah, in my ranking, you may be interested in where this came. Last place, I'll tell you. It came last place, alright. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that one, Highlander 5. Next up is the DVD of this animated movie, Highlander, The Search for Vengeance. Yes, they attempted to, yeah, it's a manga, um, they attempted to take it into animation. I believe there was a Highlander TV, animated TV series as well at one point. Um, not that I ever watched that, but I can't remember this at all. I've had it years, probably watched it once, and, and, yeah. I don't know who the characters are or anything in it, but there you go. Part into some of the good stuff. Highlander, season one of the TV series. Okay. 
So this series came out in 1992. It first premiered on October the 3rd of 1992. It did run for six whole seasons and had had 119 episodes in total. Um, it starred Adrian Paul as Duncan MacLeod, um, a cousin to Connor. Christopher Lambert did reprise the role of Connor MacLeod in the first episode. Um, yeah, so this is a nine disc set, 22 episodes. Um, it's one of the old thick boxes that you used to get, like so. Um, inside it's split into like three um, split into three um, parts like so um, yeah when this program first started I started watching it it wasn't particularly good in this season it was very much um, sort of uh, Immortal of the Week type of a thing. Um, he did have a, a a young guy that accompanied him, who he met up with, um, who I believe he was a thief at first, but he sort of took him under his wing. It does come with like a booklet with um, all the episodes. This is a, a Region 1 release. Um, yeah, it wasn't a particularly great series. Um, I wouldn't have been as surprised if it wasn't picked up for a second season. Um... But, ultimately it was. Um, yeah, let's get on to season two. So, this is season two. Now, this is where this series hit the ground running. Um, whereas the first season was very much um, uh, uh, Immortal of the Week, Im Evil Immortal of the Week, when this came about, um, it, 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 it was a whole lot darker. It introduced a lot of um, backstory, a lot of world building. He was introduced to the Watchers. They were actually introduced in the last episode or the last two episodes of, of the first season, actually. Um, and these are a group of, of humans that throughout time they've known about the Immortals, but they've kept secret. They're like a secret society, but they observe and record their goings on and this sort of a thing. Um, Duncan does befriend one of them. You get to meet Mythos, who is the oldest ever immortal. Um, the young guy who's who's Adrian Paul's, um, the, the guy, who, you know, the, the co-lead. He he got gunned down at the same time as, in about the, the fourth, third or fourth episode, he got gunned down at the same time as Adrian Paul's love interest from the whole first season. She died, but at the same time he woke up and you come to realise he's actually immortal as well. Because you need a violent death to kick in your immortality when you're an immortal. So he sort of becomes Adrian Paul's, um, Duncan MacLeod's protégé, who he then trains. Um, it, it was, it, it, at this point, that was the Alexandra Van Der Voort, I think her name was. That actress, she's the one who, who gets killed and gunned down. So this here is one of these sets that opens up for about a mile long. Um, it really does. It, these, I hate these. I hate them. Look, look at that. They're eight discs. Oh, it's massive. And you never really know how to fold it back up. But, you know, it was a fantastic series. It was a lot of fun. Um, so that was season two. Then, obviously, we come into season three. Now, the program was a bit odd in that each year it would flip between being set in America, filmed in Canada, um, and in Paris. Because it was a joint production between Canada and, and France, they, ha they had this half and half filming um, agreement. So half the film was filmed over there, half was filmed over in America or in Canada. Um, so it's a bit odd that every season it goes from being set in one location and then they sort of travel over to this other location. Um, it seems a bit forced in the grand scheme of things, but it made for different sort of, um, um, you know, different scenery, I suppose, and that sort of thing. And that's part of the reason why um, his girlfriend, Alexander Van Der Voort's character, um, left the show because she didn't want to um, be filming in blowing a CD-ROM there. Didn't want to be filming in, in back and forth 
So yeah, so that there with its massive long again, one of these fold out things. Um, yeah. So with this series, it does, um, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't follow on from Highlander the film. It was, it was, sort of, the, the events of Highlander the first movie occurred, but the final fight with the Kurgan wasn't for the prize. It would have been still in other immortals around. So that's how this series got around. Um, that sort of the end of Highlander one. But it's set within its own confines, within its own rules and its own universe. But it was fantastic for world building. It did do a lot for. Highlander. Like I said, the first season isn't very good um, and is very skippable and if you were going to watch it, I'd say jump on at season two and then once you get into it, maybe go back and see season one. So again, now we have season four. Again, 22 episode season. Like I said, this ran from October 3rd, 92 and finished on May the 16th, 1998. Um, but seriously, it was, it, it became, it did become a really good show. Um, a people died, they introduced new characters, there were new co-leads, um, they, people died all the time. It, it's kind of like you never knew who was safe. It's not like a sort of Star Trek series or the like where you've got a, a cast that's, um, just frequent all the way through. It would mix things up. Um, he, would in, he would have new friends, his new friends would end up dying after a couple of years. Yeah, it was um, quite a, a strange one. But very good, very good. So, now you're on to season five. Um, Adrian Paul was very good in this show. He, he, he knew the character, he, he, he had his own history written out for the character. He knew where he'd been all the times, over the years. Um, and a, a lot of the flashback sequences are played for, like, in a humorous take. Um, at least this one opens up to be a bit smaller because they doubled up the discs on each, on each thing. So that's that's good. <laughs> that's something at least. Um, yeah, very good. Um, Adrian Paul actually starred prior to this. He starred in um, War of Worlds season two. There was a War of Worlds TV series. Back in the 80s, I do have them somewhere actually. Um, and Adrian Paul was one of the stars of season two of that. So that's season five. Then we have the final season. Season's Highlander. Season six, the final season. Again, a nice glossy box. They are all glossy boxes. Um, this was half a season, I believe. 13 episodes. Um, yeah. Um, the series ended for some characters it didn't end for adrian paul's character because obviously this is after this you spun off into the films into highlander endgame and highlander the source so this tv series is fantastic that's one of the watchers um joe burns i believe his name was in it or jim burns joe burns um he was in it from season two all the way through um and he did appear in the film as well so yeah the fantastic series 119 episodes from season one you'd have thought this program doesn't deserve to go anywhere it's a load of rubbish but then from season two boy it just hit the ground running and back in the um 90s this was a fantastic series for me i really enjoyed it i was really into it season one is actually available on blu-ray um, it, it did get released in europe but it was only ever season one that was released i never got it because the others weren't released, and obviously season one isn't a particularly great series. Um, now, last but not least, Highlander the Raven. Now, Highlander the Raven is a spin-off series to the TV series I just showed, um, starring Elizabeth Grayson, who's a female immortal. She did pop up quite often in the Highlander TV series. And in that last season, they... they guest starred a few female characters to try the trial them as as potential spin-off material but ultimately they went with elizabeth grayson this geezer was a, a police officer who um got to know her and that um he's not immortal he's like the human you know the standard sort of person in it um this program did only run for one season 
22 episodes and um, didn't get no more. Um, yeah, so this is Highlander the Raven, the series, pretty much. What's it say on it? Highlander the Raven, digitally mastered, surround sound, nine disc set. So yes, it doesn't call it even call it season one. It's just Highlander the Raven, the TV series. So yeah, so they say there can only be one, but blimey, there's a lot. <laughs> but no, seriously, Highlander won the first film. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's a fantastic, fantastic film. Um, if, you can ignore the other sequels. Um, you know, there's probably something that should never have been made. Um, but the TV series is fantastic. It was a fantastic series back in the 90s. I'm pretty sure that not many people actually followed it after season one because season one is quite abysmal. Um, first episode, the villain in the first episode, again, tried to be like a carbon copy of of, of um, Clancy Brown's the Kurgan from the very first Highlander film, and, and it ultimately fails. Um, like I said, Conor McLeod does pop up in that first episode. It looks a bit like Farmer Giles in it. I don't know what they're thinking. But from season two onwards... The show just hit its stride. It it really did become something special, and and it, it done a, f a fantastic job of world building, the immortals, and this sort of stuff. There's a lot of fantastic reoccurring um, 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 villains and um, good immortals, and that you had Roger Daltrey pop up. He was in it. He kept recurring as a friend of McLeod. You know the singer from the Who, Roger Daltrey. Um, the lead singer of, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the band now. Um, she drives me crazy. That band. Fine Young, Can Fine Young Cannibals. That's it. That's what I was looking for. The lead singer of the Fine Young Cannibals, he was in it. And there's a lot of other sort of faces from sort of a music background. Because obviously the first film of Highlander... Um, had that Queen connection where they done the music and songs like um, Who Wants to Live Forever, um, um, It's a Kind of Magic, um, were made for that film. Um, even the Highlander, the TV series, uses Queen song for, for the opening, opening music of the song. Um, Princes of the Universe is, is, the, is the song they use. Um, yeah, again, just fantastic set anyway that's my set of highlanders um all the highlander uh, dvds that i have um that was an interesting look for me because like i said i didn't even know that i had that that holographic coin thing um in there highlander there can be only one so oh, i don't know yeah if you didn't see it i got no idea at all where this came from I cannot recall I cannot recall even having it um, so yeah what well, does actually it says season two on it limited edition medallion season two limited edition medallion so I must have got it from somewhere I must have I don't know order it or something I've got no idea I cannot recall but there you go so that was my look at my Howlander collection. Um, thank you for watching. Um, please consider subscribing and all that. And I'll see you next time now. Take care all. Goodbye.